About two months ago, Jess Kelly was in here telling us about the rather curious story of how some Irish users of Facebook were being targeted with adverts which offered a gun that could be bought online. We have had some developments in the story since then. Jess is here with us uh, once again. Afternoon, Jess. Afternoon, Sean. So, fill people in. The last time you remember this, mm. what did you do that time? Yeah, so uh, an Irish Facebook user uh, identified an ad, he shared it on Twitter, so I went down a rabbit hole trying to track down this particular ad. I managed to do it, I went to the website, straight away the website was showing pricing in euro, it wasn't asking for age verification, if I held a gun licence, anything at all. So I placed an order for the firearm. Mm. Uh, The website had prompted me to pay via PayPal, which I did. And then a few days later, the website went offline entirely. I was getting a 404 error. I tried to email the retailer because an email address was on the bottom of the receipt. The email was giving me bounce backs. So when I spoke to you, I assumed it was a scam Mm. because the website disappeared. They took my money. Again, it was around 50 euro. Um, And so I, I thought no more of it. We had signed it off as just being an online scam. Yeah, but you had, yeah, but you had. You couldn't contact them directly, but you did try and uh, uh, contact them via PayPal. Yes, they PayPal has something called a resolution centre. Uh, so if there's an issue with a retailer, you can engage through this portal. So I went into the portal and I flagged that my item hadn't arrived. The retailer engaged instantly via the PayPal portal. Now, there is a bit of a time difference um, in terms of where they are versus where I am. So they came back about 12 hours later, uh, which was impressive enough, given that the website and the email had disappeared, to say that the device was in uh, progression towards me. So the the last update that I had was that uh, the online trace is updated on 25-23, so the 20th of May 23. The package is in transit to you. Right, Okay, And so... And now, just to describe to people, it was it, it, it was marketed as a gun, though quite cleverly they didn't use that word. It, it kind of looked like a, a, a credit. It was the size of a credit card, mm-hmm. but folded out to be a weapon. Yeah. So the way it was marketed on these Facebook ads, and I have the exact language, so it looks like a phone, but it's definitely not a phone in capital letters. The device name is Folding for Self Defense. Best concealed carry targets, but definitely the last resort for defense. Made in the USA, and it accompanied a video with a gun that demonstrated somebody holding this device and firing. Right, okay. Now, the, the we're not actually, just in case anybody wonders, we're not actually saying the name of this particular uh, mm. uh, product. Uh, that's why we're being kind of vague in the language. And it is a knockoff. Yeah. of an American version of this thing. Yeah, so if people know the Michael Kors handbags, right, every now and then you might walk <laughs> down a street and you might see a Michael Norris handbag. Yeah. It looks very similar, not the same thing. Uh, and so the, the knockoff and the imitation devices and all the rest, that does happen. It doesn't mean that it's an utterly useless product at all. Mm. It could very well be made in the same factory. Yeah. But some elements are slightly different. Right. Okay. Now the thing is, yeah, you, you approach PayPal, heard nothing for weeks. Yep. And then what happened? Well, I kind of forgot about it because I just thought it was a scam. I thought they've got my fifty quid. I'll try and expense it, see if I get it back. <laughs> Who knows? But then one morning I came into work. It was a Thursday morning. I was opening my post, and as I worked my way through, I, there was an A five sized bubble envelope on my desk and it had a courier label that you'd often see you know if you buy trainers from abroad or whatever Mm. it is that was on it and there was a bit of weight it felt like there was a heavy chain or something like that inside so I opened it and inside was a clear zip and seal pouch bag that you'd often see Uh, and inside was the gun the gun had arrived here into Newstalk and was sitting on my desk Were there any instructions? Were there... Was there anything... It was just a gun in a bag? There was a gun in a baggie, and that was it. There was no box, there was no instruction, there was no safety notice. There was absolutely nothing. And to be honest, I was quite taken aback, because it took me a second to realise what it was. Then the realisation hit me that I've got a gun on my desk. Uh, So I was pretty shook when it arrived, and given the fact that it was so like haphazardly the envelope it wasn't even neatly put in the envelope do you know what I mean so that there was that that fear factor of okay what is this 
is it legitimate and then ensuring that we carried out the correct steps from a safety point of view as well yeah now just i must say i I, I, um, this is for the guards my fingerprints are on this gun as well (laughs) because obviously we all had a look at it it was heavy enough to feel like a gun uh, albeit a small one yeah the so again it's worth noting in my michael kors michael kors very clever uh, analogy that i gave a second ago this is a legitimate product Uh, this is a knockoff of a legitimate product there are real versions of of the device that we received. Um, and so there is a bit of weight to it. It's made up, and I checked, it's made up of aluminium, uh, a substance called polymer, and then plastic as well. They were the three elements in it. So there was a bit of weight in it. Uh, it is designed by nature to be a foldable firearm. So when you unfold it, uh, it did have a, a trigger. Uh, there were places for uh, ammunition to be put in. Uh, so for, you know, for, for the untrained eye, uh, shocker, I'm not a, uh, a, a ballistics expert, but to an untrained eye, it did look like a legitimate firearm. It's also worth noting that on the side of it, it did say it was a .22 calibre gun. It's been advertised as a .22 calibre. And just to explain what that means, this is, it's not the biggest firearm, it's not the most powerful firearm, but it can do damage. Uh, and although I got it from a website that was advertised on Facebook and I got it for quite cheaply. I got it for again for 50 euro. There is nothing to say that damage could not be done with a, a device like this. As I mentioned, we handed it over to the guards who are now carrying out um, examinations with their ballistic teams to verify if it's a legitimate firearm or an imitation firearm. Now, just to clarify the, the legal situation here. So in terms of the law in Ireland, there is extensive legislation that says you must hold a valid licence to hold or possess any firearm and you're only able to do so for certain purposes. And for the sake of clarity, you cannot obtain a firearm in Ireland for personal protection. But what I found incredibly interesting in my research for this is that there's an amendment to the Firearms and Offensive Weapons Act of 1990 uh, and there was an amendment made in 2009 and it states that it will be an offence for any person to import, manufacture, sell, repair, test, expose for sale or possess for sale, repair or test uh, any realistic imitation firearm unless they are registered with the Department of Justice. So as we heard Declan explain there a second Mm -hmm. ago, you know, even if this doesn't fire at all, if it's just, if it, if, if the person on the other end of the firearm believes it to be an, a, a legitimate firearm, that is an offence. So it's not enough just to say, oh, well, I just had it because it looked interesting or anything like that. There is legislation now that, that puts a ban to that. So whether or not it is a viable firearm, and hopefully we will know when the Guardi complete their testing, this should not be for sale nor in the possession of somebody in Ireland without the licence or without the nod of approval uh, from the Department of of justice. Right, and now it should be pointed out the gun did arrive with us and in jig time the guards are around yes. uh, to relieve it. Uh, they've had it ever since and as uh, Jess says, they've been carrying out uh, ballistic tests on mm. it. Now the thing was, our assumption was that even if they had posted this thing, that it had been nabbed by customs. Yeah. Uh, that didn't seem to happen. It didn't seem to happen. As I said, it, the, on the envelope itself, there were two separate uh, labels, uh, tracking labels. So it obviously came from the country of origin, which we haven't been able to confirm, uh, got to a certain point in its journey and then a second label um, got it to, to us here now. I did reach out to uh, Revenue and to Customs to get a bit of more, a bit more insight into how this entire process works. So they told me that they have a, a the primary responsibility for detection, interception and seizure of pro- prohibited and restricted goods. Uh, they deploy what's called a risk risk-based approach uh, and they use a variety of resources such as detector dog teams, x-ray scanners and physical examinations in their work. They did say that the control of weapons is provided for in a wide range of legislation and that they liaise with the national licensing authorities on an ongoing basis in relation to the detection of firearms. However, and they said, and this is a quote, we will not be providing further comment on these procedures for operational and security reasons. What I found really interesting again is that uh, revenue does not differentiate between a firearm 
and an imitation firearm. Mm, yeah. So that goes back to the point we just made a second ago. On, in the eyes of the law, uh, both things are not allowed unless you are licensed or unless it's flagged with the DOJ. Uh, we do have stats on the number of firearms seized by customs over the last number of years. So in 2021, there was 104. In 2022, there was 1,165. Wow, that's in a, a jump. Second. I'll explain that in a second. <laughs> okay. And in the year to date, so up to June 30th, uh, there were 301 seized the reason the, uh, for the 2022 figure being 1,165 was as a result of a single large seizure, uh, a single seizure of large quantity of replica firearms with muzzle energy exceeding the maximum legal limit. So that's why that was a single mm. seizure that obviously had a number of devices in it. Uh, so although the entire 2021 figure was 104, uh, in 2023 so far we have had 301. Yeah. Now, and now, in fairness, I, I suppose to, uh, to customs, this uh, this was specifically designed to not look like a gun. So, you know, if you looked at it with an X-ray, perhaps you wouldn't have thought it was a gun. Yeah, and that's part of the appeal of this, and you know, the legitimate uh, version of this device that's for sale in the US almost prides itself on, and it, the concealability of the gun mm. is very much a selling point. As you mentioned a minute ago, a minute ago Sean, when it, when it arrived in, it looked like, you know, six or seven credit cards stacked on top of each other. Yeah. If you yeah. head to newstalk.com, you'll be able to see images of the device both folded up and um, sort of folded out into the shape of a gun. Uh, so it is definitely worrying that it arrived in um, and that all of this sort of originated from ads on Facebook. Yeah, now, and that's the other worrying aspect mm. of this. When you were with us uh, uh, two months out ago, they were still carrying ads for this weapon. Yes. What's the situation now? So we spoke to Meta at the time and they confirmed that uh, ads of this nature, not only in Ireland, but anywhere in the world, were in breach of its dangerous content ad policies. When we flagged these ads with Meta back uh, a few mo- weeks ago now at this stage, they were taken down. However, I've been keeping track of the back end of, of the ads library within Meta and have noticed that ads have been consistently there as recently as one hour ago. Uh, so one hour ago, I got onto Meta and I told them that the ads were back there again and uh, they ha- that ad has since been taken down. Also, just uh, as we came on air, I received a message uh, letting me know that the advertiser's advertising abilities have now been disabled. Uh, So action is being taken to try and track this. We did get insight into how the ad processes work at uh, Meta. There are a number of stages that uh, ads go through. Very often it is being, uh, I suppose, assessed by artificial intelligence. There there are other layers there in terms of analysis and detection that can take place after an ad goes live. But ads can be reported by the Facebook community at any time, triggering the enforcement mechanisms. Yeah, so, but I suppose the, their problem is, is that they're, they're probably using AI to look at these things. And these adverts don't use the word gun or weapon or pistol or any what would be, pardon the pun, trigger words for the AI. Exactly. Now, one thing that I have been uh, thinking about and, uh, you know, I haven't put this to meta, but there's an awful lot of technology. So, for example, if I take a picture of you now and I save it to my Google Cloud, Mm. the AI within my Google Photos will know that it's Sean Moncrief because I have other pictures of you from over the years and I can save your name. And so it can then pull every photograph that I've ever taken of you and know that you're Sean Moncrief. Surely similar tracking technologies have to be at the fingertips of these big tech giants, not only to assess the language models, but indeed the video and the photograph content. And this doesn't just go for Meta, this goes for any platform that is hosting ads. Um, I did talk to a legal expert about the rules and regulations when it comes to online advertising, like, you know, working in radio for as long as you have, there are particular things that we can say and we can't say and ways you can do it. Uh, it's quite interesting. So historically and until very recently, the position in respect of platforms was that they were not responsible for any ads which were on the platform if users solely generated the advertisement on the platform unless the platform is made aware of an ad which constitutes illegal content, then the platform is generally not liable. 
Now, there has been an update to that uh, under the Digital Services Act, which places more obligations, particularly on what's called very large online platforms to take responsibility for ads on their platform. The bulk of these obligations centre around the same safe harbour system of needing to be notified, but they do now have the obligation to maintain a transparency register for historic ads. So it's not as black and white as you might think Mm. uh, in terms of identification, uh, removal, investigation and then prohibiting um, content on different online platforms. Uh, But it is a massively concerning one because, again, just to to summarise briefly, this ad appeared on Facebook Ireland. I clicked through. The prices were, were given to me in euro. Within a matter of minutes, I had the device added to my cart, paid for with my PayPal and a receipt in my inbox. A matter of weeks later, a device, we're still waiting for the Guardi to come back. They did tell us that they are investigating and they can't comment further at this time. But a device that looks, for all intents and purposes, to be a gun, landed on my desk having arrived in the post. Yeah. So there, yeah. Are, there are a number of concerning areas here that, you know, there, there are still more questions than answers. Uh, but it, it definitely is a worrying one. Yeah, it is indeed. And of course, we will let you know uh, when the, uh, the Gardaí come back uh, with that ballistics report. Uh, most importantly, Jess, were you able to claim it back on expenses? Uh, I'm telling you now, that's the first thing I'm going to do when I get out of here. <laughs> right. OK, thanks a million, Jess. Fantastic work. Uh, Jess Kelly there.